What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and you are listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio, somewhat under the weather, but still showing up with an amazing soul by the name of Erica Swenson Elliott. Erica, how are you? Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. So great to be with you again, Jay. It's been too long. It has been too long. I've actually canceled on Erica twice, but that's a very unfortunate thing. And today, I'm actually, as she knows, I told her off air, I'm under the weather. I won't say that I have whatever I may have, but it's not <laughs> not very pleasant. But I am here continuing the mission. And uh, Erica has an amazing story. Let me give you guys her bio. She is a very evolving soul, aren't we all? And she began her particular journey as a CPA, which she is a master's in taxation, of course, an accountant. She is a very high-level bean counter. <laughs> but, at, but at heart, she is an author and an artist. And Erica and I actually met almost, geez, almost a year ago now. Can you believe how fast time flies? Yeah. Uh, when we launched the Optimized Drive Private Group with myself and Michael Jaco. And she's become a good friend, a very loyal member of the Optimized Tribe. And I've been wanting to get her story to do this podcast for a long time. So here we are. Um, as I always do on the uh, Optimized Optimize Tribe, on the Jay Campbell podcast, um, <laughs> I like to get kind of get a flavor of what's going on. So let me just ask you, and for the time markers, because this is probably not going to even run until January or so, uh, today is Monday, October 25th. The world, Erica, is spinning off of its axis right now, probably more so in this timeline than maybe ever. So much crazy yeah. stuff is happening, but let me just get your take kind of your gauge on like what you see is happening and where are we going? No, well, thanks for asking. And thanks for having me on here, Jay. I'm honored to be on your podcast because it's an important vehicle, especially in the time that we find ourselves today. Sure. Um, it's not easy to get information or feel brave enough to share information in some cases. So, you know, for me, this is definitely, and you and I have talked about this personally, is this is the time for the journey within, because we are in the dark night of the soul of this planet. And if we are not finding that spiritual, in, eternal, expansive space inside of our own beings, this, you're never going to find it, because many of us physically can't move around. We're limited in different ways. So this is the time to look within. And some of us are still scared to do that, but... That's part of my story today. Beautiful. And I'm glad you said that. And I'm, and I'm appreciative and grateful that you did. Um, a lot of people, as you know, Erica, are not courageous enough to speak okay. about what is going on. And let's be honest, what is going on is tyranny at all levels. I mean, let's stop it. You know, it's crazy. I mean, all of us have to choose, again, as I like to say, to live in resonance, which is, you know, to live in love and not to live in fear, right. which is obviously dissonance. But a lot of people have been pushed into the corner. Right. And you know, due to their jobs or their economic livelihood or their status in society or whatever it is. I mean, I get it. You know, people that work in government sector jobs who have been there for 25 to 30 years. I mean, what are they going to do? Right. I mean, look, you and I know there's always a choice. You know, you can say no and you can look to the future because again, from entropy comes creation. We're all 
right. evidence of that, but it is difficult as a person who has a 25 plus year experience, experiential background in a sector, especially if you're in a government or a civil authority job to say, Oh no, I'm going to say F you and I'm going to go find something else. Cause I understand how we get, we get in these boxes, you know, we define ourselves in these little sandboxes, but I mean, look at this point in the third dimension, as it unravels, all of us have to choose what's heart based or what is best for our heart. And I know you understand yeah. that more than anyone, but a lot of people just can't do it right now. I think I would suggest for other people that are struggling to take that first step would be start small, start yeah. with tiny little things that you feel like you can, to, and that will give you courage and um, to move forward and maybe make some more choices, but you can't just jump off the cliff right away. If you've never, if, if you haven't stood up for yourself yet. So, <laughs> so. head first. No, and that's true. <laughs> that, that's kind of where we are actually. Whereas, a lot of people who have not experienced dramatic change, what I call the dark night of the soul, haven't been asked or have had to choose to be courageous. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you're right. So now everyone is being pushed to the edge, pushed to the limit. And so now you have to make a choice. But let's liken this to your story. Yeah. And, you know, what happened to you in your early childhood with this, you know, very traumatic early onset asthma? Yeah. Um, so I think this is, I, th I think telling truth in story form makes it more accessible and palatable to people to take in because now you can listen to someone else's story and it's not so in, you know intense and then you can apply it to your own life. So, right. um, and one of the things I'm thankful for doing this topic with you is it actually has forced me to start writing it up and I, I'm starting with a blog, but I'm eventually going to turn it into like a book and it'll be like something that people can use to follow along and, and apply in their own life. So when I was three years old, um, I was living in inner city, Philadelphia. I was the oldest child and I had a baby brother, Keith, that was, had been born, a, you know, in the summer, like around August. So this is in December when I had the attack, the first attack. So four months before he'd been born, he had a hole in his heart. He was a baby that had um, down syndrome and therefore, Today, they can fix in vitro the disease that, you know, he had with the hole in his heart, but they couldn't back then. So he was basically bleeding to death and living on transfusions um, for about yeah. four months. So obviously, it was very, you know, tra traumatic. And as a kid, I think because of that emotion, one of the things I figured out is when we have very intensive emotions as an early child, that's why we can pull back those memories. So if you had a very stable, you might not have a lot of great you might not have any memories from early childhood because you didn't go through something that traumatic. So in my right. theory, in my world, like that's kind of what we can remember and pull from. Right. So in December, he died December 16th and I was, I was turning three a week later. So that's how early on. And I woke up in the middle of the night and literally was like, <clears throat> like that intense. And I'm like, what the, I never had that, you know, before. So I then the next memory I have is laying on the floor of the bathroom with my mother on the phone. And this is like, you know, I'm old enough. And Jay, you know, like we had the big, long landline, you know, with the long cord that she's stretching to have the pediatrician on the phone with me in the in the bathroom. And they think I have the croup. So they have like the shower running and I'm like, oh, I can't breathe you know, with all this steam. So I'm literally like spread eagled on the floor. And I remember the pink and gray tile like in my eyes and I realized, okay, I can breathe, but the I could hear the panic in my mom's, you know, voice. And when you're that little, you know, we don't have the words yet that, wow. you know, that adults have. So you can't really explain it. Like, but I cognitively, I knew what they were saying and I could understand what they were saying and I knew I was in trouble. So I figured out that, and this is what we're talking about, that it was the fear that was really killing me. And so I can see today where like they try to suppress children with asthma medicine, that they're trying to suppress and like calm down in essence, the fear. So if you can bring, so I figured out how to bring the fear down. I ended up getting into like a naturally like a child's pose, like where yoga pose where like your butts up in the air and your head's down, like face on the ground. Right. And I could start to breathe. So that was like my first spiritual lesson. And I realized it was a journey that I chose, my soul chose, you know, on this particular time around the merry-go-round was that, okay, 
fear is going to kill you if you can figure out how to remove it and calm yourself down. So that was the first night. And it didn't really get better um, until I went through a number of different healing crises when I was an adult. So that's the start of the story. Wow. Incredible stuff. Um, so the next part that I didn't put together until this year was, and this is through like the meditation and yoga, the you know deep inner journey is I started to try to figure out, well, what the timing was. So about 10 years ago, I was working with a healer that used it, used um, a vibrational medicine, Dr. Fox flower remedies. So kind of like us, you know, taking the small little doses of stuff. And she, that I call her Dr. Karen. She was also used acupuncture and she was saying often grief is the cause of lung acute issues or chronic issues. So if you're having lung issues, you you might be dealing, if you're here in the audience listening to us, to some kind of grief issue. Was it right. from a death, a divorce, a loss of parents? I mean, and it and when did it occur? By the way, Louise Hay says the exact same thing. Lu I don't think I know Louise, but yeah, I'm Louise, Lu Lu Louise Hay is the you know the Mo Monica uses her app. She was a lady that like declined like all the ailments and all the oh, yeah, mysterious yeah. injuries that or sicknesses that people have or illnesses. And then defines them to a specific part of the yes. anatomy and, yes. and and what trauma it's really due from. Yes, and this is yeah, this is not my concept, right? This is this yeah, is yeah. Like, yeah, this is out there. This is very universal, and I, I guess there's nuances on it. Traditional traditional Chinese medicine that definitely you know uses all of this stuff too. Um, so yeah, so and if I I kind of think anger is hard, if I remember correctly. So like if a lot of men with like heart attack issues and stuff, it's usually about issues with anger, for example. So for yeah, me, yeah. it was about lungs. So when she first told me that, I was like, grief. I'm not depressed, and I was like kind of like annoyed that she was telling me that. But I had to sit with that information, and it, and I was like, well, when did it really start? Oh, that was a kind around the time my brother died. Wow. So then that was the first connection. So then I realized this year that it was also the time that my mother told me that I was behind on my childhood vaccines and they were, and he, she and the pediatrician decided that they were going to catch me up. Oh my God. Dude. And so at this very same time, I'm going through, you know, the loss of my brother is when I'm getting jacked up on these, you know, catch up vaccines. Incredible. So now, in my theory, maybe if I hadn't been going through that, maybe I wouldn't have, maybe it wouldn't have triggered, but because I was suppressed from the grief, who knows, you know, like it was, or maybe I would have been the same outcome. So, and in my case, I feel like instead of, and it is a technical term, vaccine injured child. I mean, so right. that, and if I, one of the books I found this year, I don't know if that's showing up very well, the vaccine court, this is a parent of a vaccine injured child that wrote it. So I realized what the DPT at the time had the P stands for pertussis, significant problems with that because they were using live um, antigens at the time and didn't realize. So I think in my case, when I look at my mother's little notes, <laughs> like that's when I had the pertussis. So the vaccine core, I don't know if you want to get into that now. That's like an, or you want to move around. No, you can definitely talk about it. I mean, you know, I love, I mean, look, the more we talk about it, the more likely this, this podcast is deleted, but you know me, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so I, so I mean, truth that, is truth, dude. I think, I mean, the books out there, you can buy the book on Amazon. So if you, you know, you can go and find it for yourself because for each one of us, we all have to find, you know, our own, our own journey. So I don't think I really connected that that was part of when to my personal timeline, that that's when that asthma started. So if we go forward from there, it was bad. Um, and I basically figured out how to live with it. Um, the other thing that happened is I didn't find out till later. I had a severe, I had severe food allergies. One of them was to eggs. Well, what's in vaccines? Egg. So like, I don't know if that was part of my triggering about why I still can't eat eggs to this day without getting sick. So mine were like very chronic injuries compared to other children that are severely you know, damaged. The, um, I think I'd like to, maybe if we skip from there, do you want to get a little bit into the healing modalities I eventually came to? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, again, it's, this is your podcast, so you take well, it in the direction me. you want to take it. 
it's the we podcast. No, no <laughs> but I, you know, it's, it's yeah. your story. So we talk about what you want to talk okay. about. Okay. So I, I mean, I grew up in a very uh, spiritual, it was a very church, you know, and you know this already. My dad was a, a minister, a Protestant minister. He was very much like man of the people going to the streets, minister to the, you know, the homeless. And, you know, we sure. had the people, the, you know, the recovering drug addict come and stay in the house, like all the kind of crazy stuff that wouldn't, you know, was not in a normal childhood. So during that time, I was very much like, well, if I pray really hard, I should just get over it. And so I was very like there. And if I don't get over it, then my faith, it must be my faith that's lacking. And in today's world, I realized, no, this is the journey I chose to uncover and peel back the onion. And here we are sitting today in this world of medical tyranny. <laughs> and so I think it's important for me to you know, tell, you know, when people were trying to do things, good things, like it, it wasn't necessarily a good thing, you know, for me. So the next so then the next thing i uh, so around 16 i actually had a spiritual healer actually take like the significant laid hands on me and i could feel like uh an electric shock go through my lungs and this was at like a a church youth group event so i was there with all my friends and he no one else in the church i knew of was able to do it um but him so that was definitely like a an amazing kind of moment. It got me from the place of having to rely on big pharma's uh, medications that I took with, you know, that was the only way I could breathe. It was like Theophilus and Theodore, which today are like de known as derivatives of amphetamines. And like, you can't, you know, this is something children should not be on. So I, I went cold turkey and stopped taking those. I still had an inhaler um, in case I needed it. And the inhaler ripped my throat up so i was always like sore and like coughing and stuff in there and i also didn't know about the food allergy so i was still eating things that were you know causing me constant like nose nasal all the time so like what you're experiencing today is nothing jay <laughs> like i lived with that i literally went to school with like a toilet paper roll in my backpack or because like crazy. that was that was the, i couldn't figure out how else to live um, so then when, after I started working, I kind of went into denial mode where if I went into, if I lived inside of an air conditioned office building, then like I could kind of control my, you know, my allergies and stuff. Like I could take down the environmental ones. So it wasn't until I restarted and rebooted my life, remarried again and moved to Palm Beach, Florida with my husband, Keith, who was a retired, who was a retired already down in Florida. And my kids were little. So all of a sudden I went from being this crazy working person to this mom and starting a new life and spending time with my husband. So it was like, okay, well, now I have time to figure this stuff out. And who am I? So then I started looking at the healing modalities. And so it was like, I needed that time. Like, And, you, and, you, and you've been there, Jay, many times because I've read your amazing emails <laughs> about your story is that you need you need to get to that place where everything's emptied out into a vacuum for you to even look around and go, what happened? Where am I? Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up, and I'll see and talk to you soon. It's uh, it's a, if it, it well, it, I mean, look, it's it, it's a very different world that we're now living in, right? Like, I mean, you message people, and they say, you know, like. I'm waiting for it to go back to normal. And I laugh and I'm like, uh, hello, it's not going back to normal. It might be it's time. Two for years. You, it might be time for you to remove your normalcy bias goggles. Because yes. that's nonsense. And and you know, I love saying this. The only thing that is inevitable in the third dimension is change. And yet 95% of people are resistant to change. Mm -hmm. So if you think about that, like how can most people ever get out of that loop? They're in a feedback loop of living in yes. the same place, 
doing the same thing, you know, unwilling to see things for the way they are instead yes. of the way they define them to be. So it's like right now, Erica, this is the collective dark night of the soul of humanity. Regardless yeah. of where you are, everybody right now has issues. They have family members, friends, peers, colleagues, husbands, wives, kids, daughters who have been either who have taken it, who have been forced to take it, quit their job over. I mean, we're all being pushed to the limit. You know, as I told you the story off air about the gym owner and, yeah. you know, I even said to him, you know, after he told me that I was like, George, everything's going to work out, you know? So like each of us has to get to a place where we recognize, you know, again, I'll give my mentor here, Dr. Hawkins, you know, his statement was everything is happening as it's intended divinely yeah. always and in all ways. So it's like when you release or surrender to that awareness, everything does get easier. But as you know, our ego is designed to keep us in survival and to keep us prepared yeah. to keep us, you know, in that fight or flight syndrome. And it's like, it's so hard to break out of fight or flight, especially when you're pushed to the corner. But if you, if you hold on to that awareness, which you clearly have now in your life, of like, it's all going to happen as it's going to happen and just be patient. See, that's the problem is that society today with technology right. does not give us patience. We want right. instant answers, instant gratification, instant access. It's like, it's so hard to just be like, cool, go, go right. outside, sit in nature, relax and chill. And the answer will come to you. Right. And I, I, I think that's a per, I mean, I feel so two, a couple things were, when I didn't answer that call and stop and sit down and sit under the tree and connect with nature or in divine source inside of me, um, you're, and you know, this too, your body takes over and, um, will make you sit down. <laughs> so I, one of the things that happened to me was I, I hurt my knee and I was insisting, my ego was insisting that I wanted to still play tennis down in Florida and my, you know, 38 year old knee at the time didn't want to interact like my uh, 18 year old knees did. So I ended up not being able to walk and it was extremely painful and it took me into the hot yoga room. And it was the first time in my life in 2008 that I started doing yoga. Cause I was like, a, like the gym rat run, like all that, you know, kind of stuff. So it got me into a different and play sports, which I kept injuring myself. So that was like beginning to peel the onion back for me where like I could start to take the layers off. And then through that journey in that hot yoga room is how I ended up realizing I had food allergies. So I had to ask a lot of questions. And I think there's a lot, there's a lot of people that I've talked to over the years, like they're kind of afraid you go and you talk to your uh, Western medicine doctor and they don't, you know, they're going to give you pills and the pills are going to suppress you and not necessarily help you heal. So you're kind of trying to do the opposite, trying to take all the layers off. I think, by the way, to that point, I think the best thing that has happened, if there's anything good that's happened in the last two years, uh, is that now people have a massive distrust of big pharma and sick care, right? I mean, who wants to, who's awake and aware right now, go to a hospital or an urgent care for anything? I mean, listen, I just read, I, I, I mean, I wish I should have saved it. Dude, yesterday, a very, very high level person on Twitter posted a message about one of his friends. You know, he posted the screenshot of the text from one of his friends who went to a urgent care because he broke his leg. And they were like, have you been beat? And he was like, no, I'm trusting my own personal immunity. And they were literally like, well, you cannot get access unless you get COVID tested. And he was like, okay, well then test me. And they jammed it up his nose, dude. He said he could not even think for five hours after because they were mad that they couldn't vaccinate him to set his broken leg. So look, let me just say this. I mean, if you are not awake <laughs> aware right now and you go to a medical facility, mm -hmm. a demonic controlled medical facility, the likelihood that your lights could get turned out is at least 30 to 40%. And when I, you know what I mean by that. I won't define I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, it's I, like, I mean, it's I, crazy to hear shit like that. I know this. I had to take a family member in for like a regular visit of checkup. And I was there, of course, asking every single you know person, do you have it? And, and 
I'm looking around. So I started eyeing up everyone in the room and I'm like, all right, I'm healthier than everyone in here. If anyone comes at me, I can outrun and like, I'll, I'm like I can get out of here before anyone that attacks me. So I totally get it. It was freaky. It was freaky. Well, I mean, at what point do we have to lie for our own safety and well-being? I mean, look, you know, I, I talked to a guy on Saturday morning who's in Ireland. And again, you know, we're very lucky right now, Erica, because yeah. we're in the United States. But if you're in a yeah. fucking third world slash European country, obviously Australia's already captured, Canada's already captured. But this dude was telling me that, he, you know, he can't even go to anywhere to get food. He's, his wife is pregnant. He's got a one-year-old already. And they're all not veed. And it's like... Sorry, bro. There's no room at the end. Now, what I told him, and this is what people don't get, and I, and again, I'm not doom and gloom here, but where it's going, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see is that like, when you tell them that you're not, they're instantly getting on comp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it becomes or, or molds into, and then you got like minutes to get out of there. I know. I know. It's cra It's crazy. I know. So yeah. I know. Yeah. So we have to be aware and keep asking. And that's where I think we have to keep coming back to our divine universe within, right? Because it's like, exactly. we can't, we cannot right. save ourselves. We're, we're going to need the divine <laughs> helping us like coming through us in some way. So that's exactly and, right. And, and with that, let me share, let me share this. I want to share this okay. with you. Let me pull this up. So I make sure I have it on the screen. Cause I don't like the way sharing, but the divine universe within. So you guys, cause people are always saying to me, you know, Jane, I don't really know what that really means. What does that mean? So look, this was literally the words of Yeshua, a.k.a. the Christ, a.k.a. Jesus the Christ, a.k.a. Yeah. The, sat, the sovereign, the avatar being that came in 2,000 years ago. If And again, very few people know this because this is from the Gospel of Philip. And it's not in the Bible, but he says, mm -hmm. if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. So what does that really mean, Erica? Well, what it means is that you have to get in connection with your higher self and your higher self is your super conscious wisdom, your intuition, the God within you, the kingdom within you, the access to all things, you know, people call it the Akashic records, you know, the hall of records, whatever you want to call it. But that information at a soul level is accessible when you learn to do inner work mindfulness, meditation, introspection, contemplation, grounding in nature, whatever it is that gets you into that place where you can be silent and observe the stillness. And that's when the answers come, because as you said, the universal consciousness or universal Christ or universal source, whatever you want to call it, the frequency is inside us, but only when we learn to access it and people have to learn to access it. Yeah. I, and I, I think this is actually part of the spiritual battle going on too. And I know you believe this too but the that it's it's really a battle for our souls because our dna is the akashic record you know and exactly. that it's like we pull it right. Exactly right and so it's really our spiritual being is in is the software running the machine so so that's, that's exactly right that's exactly right and by the way it's well put that you just kind of got me there um the dna so we know everything but we choose to forget Mm -hmm. Right. We come into physical, into the veil of illusion, the Maya of the third dimension. And we are on the path back to remembering, but we're here to evolve. And see, this is where people get lost. But, and it took a long time for me to really learn this, but we're evolving and growing our soul because God, AKA source, whatever it is, the creation, divine creation, energy of the universe wants us to, because source is learning also. Now, when you say that they're like, no, God knows everything. They're omni it's omniscient. It doesn't need to learn. <laughs> no. Life is constantly and forever evolving. And right. so even God, AKA source, that divine energy construct, whatever it is, I don't know how to define it. Nobody does. You know, uh, Hawkins defined it as pure consciousness. Because yeah. as you know, all we are is consciousness. Yeah, we're like the Not energetic bodies. We're consciousness. Yeah. You That's what people are so confused about. But like when you get to an awareness that God is learning through our yeah. mistakes and our failures and our successes. And again, there is none of that. Successes and failures is a definition in the third dimension of linear time. It's experience linear outside of this dimension. Yeah. It just is right. So everything that happens to us is evolution and growth for the soul, which is evolution and growth for God. 
Yeah. And I, I have this picture in my head that I've had for, and I mean, everyone has, to, how do you put that into an image? So if you think about, like, if you think about God's hand, like who's a spirit, he can't right. experience this physical right. or it, what, the source can't, whatever right. pronoun you want to use, but until he slips on humanity as a glove, right? right. So like, here's Jay, here's me. Right. And now he can walk around inside of the physical and through our experiences, we're, def we're refining God's experiences. I, that's, that's, a be that, that, that's a beautiful analogy. I, I like to think of it the best way. And I can't remember what book I was that said it was this. It was from a soul group called Omni. It was actually the four principles of creation, a book, by the way, written in 1994, right, such a down. profound book. It's a soul collective called Omni. And, and, they talk about it as the holographic soul, the whole, the holographic fractal souls and all. So what that is, is it basically imagine every being in the cosmos is connected to source through a fractal or a fractalization. So if you saw crystals like on an ice path or a window yeah. with like frozen crystals and spider webbing everywhere, that would be all of the different beings, us energetically connected through that holographic fractal or that crystalline grid. Yeah. And so that's how I think of it. But I like that too. Like in the third dimension, it's like a hand and it's God like is like that. It. Yeah. God is that polyurethane glove that goes over top of the hand. Yeah. 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 I think another, another image that I'd like this, and this is not mine. This is from, I think maybe Dolores Cannon maybe, but, um, but I've, I've woven the image into my calendar novel books is that um, our souls are up in, the tapestry room and so some some of the people that have gone under you might remember from like they see that tapestry room exactly. and that each one of us is one of those twines or strings inside yep. of it and when we're and it's changing like it's, it's vibrating totally because when yeah. you change and i change yeah we're like we're reading that's, by the way that, that's what um james not james monroe what was his name uh the guy the monroe whoever founded the monroe institute whatever his name was yeah, um I well, so his book, Divine, or not Divine, A Journey of the Souls, The Ultimate Journey, which was Journey of the Souls, he was able through his uh, astral travel and projection to actually see that. He talked about that intertwining of souls like a cord. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 but if you yeah. think about it, right, because we, we know this from, by the way, Dolores Cannon and him, the, they talk about the silver cord. So oh, yeah, the like silver holy. cord, yes, yeah. the silver cord is what animates our soul or connects our soul as like a tether to the divine, right? So, yeah. and by the way, it's this is also in Dolores Cannon's newest book, or not her last book that before she died, which was the one that I was talking about the last four or five months, which whatever it's called, the 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 four groups of beings or whatever that yeah. you know she, I forgot what it's called. It's over there, but but she talked about that that the silver cord is what keeps our energy body in our physical body. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when people have abduction experiences, this is important. When people have abduction experiences, they remember being pulled out of physical rooms. They all come back and they talk yeah. about like how they were removed through the walls or through the roof into the craft. Yeah. Well, their physical body isn't right. But the energy body, the spirit body, and the standing waves, right. And the vibrating molecules is pulled through physical yeah. animated or material reality into wherever they are so their memories of being pulled through are not their body and that's where people get so confused when they read these ufo abduction books because they think well how is that possible how is this physical body being dematerialized yeah. it's the same thing with ufos ufos are not physical they're etheric and they yeah, they're on a yes exactly sometimes they can appear based on the light or based on like where the person is whether the person is in etheric or the person is in physical and they can have the vision of what they see yeah. But none of this stuff, you know, Jock Vallee is the most brilliant UFO researcher, but he figured that out back in the 70s. He it's was like, like interdimensional. It's totally interdimensional. It's yeah. super conscious. It's yeah. not physical. That's why nobody really ever sees these ships. Now, obviously, they show up in the sky sometimes and we do see them. But that yeah. has to be technology that allows them to come cloak in and out of the, you know, fourth or fifth. Or I think cloaked is a good word. Yeah, cloaked yeah. is a good word because it's like coming in. Yeah. When you're talking yeah. about snapping in and out of the body, um, my husband had a medical procedure done in 2008, and it, he had a, a heart a bypass. So you know how traumatic that is. So he oh, yeah. so now he's, he's out. He's I mean he's he's back. He's conscious again. 
we're watching Wimbledon. It was that year when um, Federer and Nadal had that unbelievable, like, five-set finish over two days. So we were watching that, and he, he flatlined. He's, we're in the hospital. So you hear the machine, like, right. go into the flatline. I'm jumping out of – there was, like, the empty bed in the room. So I was jumping out of the, to go do CPR until they got in, like, the nurses got there. And it had to be, like, 20 seconds or something. Well, months later, he told me, because he, he came back in, he's like, oh, I'm fine. What are you, what's, what are you guys all worried about? Like, he, and he didn't say, I'm here. What? what? Not well, ready he, yet, dude. He was so freaked out. Like, freaked out. He didn't tell me to months later. He's like, I snapped out of my body. I, yeah. and he thought he was gone for like an hour or something. Yeah. So he was up on that court floating around looking at us. He, and he kept yeah, asking everybody. Me, oh, a lot of people that have near death experiences have the same talk. You know, it's yeah. either yeah. I walked into the light or I literally left my physical body and was observing from without. And I would say that the majority of people, you know, quote unquote, on the story of their deathbed. Right. So when like an older person is in the hospital and they're on hospice, they've been turned off for life support. That's what happens. The, the, yeah. the, the, the energy body, which is tethered through the silver cord, is like, the lack it's lax yeah and it floats out of the physical body and then it's in the room observing the physical body and the loved ones because there's usually loved ones gathering there to pay their final respects have you ever and I've heard that? I've heard so many stories like that but that's yeah. that dude that's definitely what it is yeah there's no doubt. What, I've never had it have you had that experience or? no and I actually have uh, one of my mentors one of my spiritual mentors told me not to work on astral travel and astral projection because there are a lot of nasty right. entities in the astral realms that you do not want to come into contact with. I agree. And you know what? I, I also don't think you should, for people that are interested in that, my personal feeling is even if you work with a channeler, you don't know. Well, channelers are absolutely. Look, he you says, don't know what's coming in. Right. Does God, does God channel? No, no, no. So and look, like, there are definitely benevolent, benign channels. I know that. We all know that. We've seen we their videos. Know, we don't know who they are. Stuff, but that's exactly right. You cannot right. trust right. anything coming from a different dimensional aspect. I mean, look, if they're just sending you information and the information is benign, it could still be fake. Right. I mean, who, who's to say? I mean, almost all of these people in the truth community who talk about channeling things, they don't even know if they're getting positive or negative. They don't know who it's coming from. I mean, they... They know, but they don't. I mean, it's kind of like disinformation, right? Exactly. Like it's oh, absolutely. I mean, I could name names. I'm not even going to do it. But I mean, you know, that when I had yeah. that guy Leo Bagami on my show, he told me because he's worked with all these people. He's like, Jay, trust me. He goes, even if they are working with something interdimensional or astral, it ain't positive. Right. You know. Well, I mean, what value would a higher dimensional astral being have in puppeting humans? None. So they wouldn't do it. The only ones that would do it would be somebody that got off on it and but wasn't positive. It doesn't it's about even make controlling sense. Us. It's about controlling us. And we're the exactly. ones that the earth has been given to as guardians. So exactly. we're the exactly. guardians of the earth. So a hundred percent. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, limitless life nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. So you wanted to talk about oh, mood yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so mudras, um, which did before you knew me, did you know? Did you know what they were? I did, I did, okay. I did. And I think you would be an exception because a lot of people. It's starting to the term is coming in a little bit more. Everyone today in America is pretty familiar with yoga by now. So I like. So to, it's funny you're talking about that. I'm reading a book right now called Your Conscience by Ram Lev, which is Leonard Permuttle, the guy that founded the American Meditation Institute, and so it's all yoga science. And, you know, Shriya and Preya and all that stuff. But I mean, I've been reading yoga science since probably late 90s. I think, yeah, I know you're, yeah, I know you're into the, like, the reading, the reading. And but it's amazing, though, by the way, if people just understood the Eastern traditions like Taoism and yoga science and, you know, even just understanding like the Bhagavad Gita 
or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. auto, what was it? The auto, I can't even remember what I the can't, other yeah. one But the these, are, these are amazing books. Yeah. That have told us the story, the divine story of humanity. But again, it's not really available very often in the West, or people just have aversion to it because they've been so brainwashed in Christian ideals. Right. And I think I think it's also my feeling. You know, I've always been an East Coast girl versus a West Coast you know person. So I kind of feel like there's been a, like a, an Americanized distortion as well that it, well, oh, cool. coming through, right? Like it's all. So it's like. I think you kind of have to go back and do again, do your own journey within to figure out what's the yoga that is true to you, you know, to you. So for mm -hmm. me, I, I think, well, I was doing a hot yoga in the, in the room and I, I've used the Bikram method, which, you know, many people like hate the name of Bikram now, but he, I, it's healed me. So I continue to use the medicine that works for me, regardless of, you know, the wounded healer that figured it out. So with the mudras, um, it's hand yoga. So it's only fingertips, hands and arms. So the cool thing, especially in today's world with many people that can't, aren't allowed, you can actually travel within just using sitting in your chair, sitting on your yoga cushion and just using your, your hands. So I have a lot of like, um, little art, like images and stuff that I've created with like, like trying to show that too. It's like, yeah, you can journey within, you know, just by using your hands. So if, for example, if like if it was someone, and these are all ancient, these are hundreds, thousands of years ago. Right. My particular teacher is Sabrina Mesco. Uh, she has her, her website is her name, Sabrina Mesco, M-E-S-K-O. I studied under her. I'm certified in her, her uh, courses, but you can just buy her books as well. If you're interested in watch her, her videos, I actually have one course on it too, that I've set up so far. Like if you want to own 11 mudras and you can kind of follow along and on my website, but yeah, like for sure. Is, we'll link we'll link to that in the, in the podcast. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll put that in later. I think it's better if I stand up on this. I'm gonna try to adjust this a little bit. So this one is developing med meditation. So it's easier if you take off like jewelry and stuff if you're doing this at home. And so here's your, you know, Jay knows this, but others of you watching, these are your nadis, N-A-D-I. Some people say nadis, um, are traveling or connected if you've used acupuncture. This is developing med meditation right here. So you can see I have my thumbs on my the base of my pinky, and then I have my four fingers on my wrist. So the more precise you are, and this is why you like using a book or a video course, every single mudra, if you do them for like three minutes, you're you can feel your energy change and shift mm -hmm. all of them. Now, yeah. obviously we're talking, you know, and do so we're not doing deep, slow breathing and things like that, but this is a good one to kind of get into yourself. Um, I was showing Jay before we got started. This one is we're talking about aura and like negative stuff, keeping it out of our our energy field. So this one, I might I think like yeah. So this is in front of our throat chakra right here. So we're making a diamond um, with our hands. So this one is keeping. You can almost feel like a little energy change in front if you're being aware and thoughtful um, in front of your throat. So this is a great one. If there's things that, like we're talking about these energy, darker energies attacking or trying to infiltrate our system, this is a great one to use. So I'm going to just stop talking and do a slow, deep breath a couple times so you can kind of get the feel of this one. One last breath together. And then you can relax and let go. Definitely yeah. shifts the energy. Did you feel that? Oh, yeah, it That's shifts cool. the energy. It's amazing. It's cool. I'm going to show you one last one. Okay. So this one is, this one's protection mudra. So you're going to put your left, your left hand over your right hand. You're going to remember the pharaohs, right? You're basically thinking about the pharaohs and you're going to have it right over your heart chakra, your heart center at this point. So Jay, yeah, try to get your, if you can get your wrist. Yeah, I think your wrist is over your heart in essence. Yep. Yep. Okay. And you want your fingers touching. So this one's protection mudra. So this is another one. If you're feeling sick or like all of a sudden something's, this would be one you go into to help heal yourself and like shift your energy back again. So 
And then the more, the, the more when you're practicing in front of the mirror will help you as well. So we'll close our eyes and we'll do three breaths together on this one. We're going to do inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose with mouth closed. One last inhale, one last exhale. Then you can release and relax. Beautiful. So if you're gonna start doing them yourself, you definitely want to um, try to do like, take a half hour, have a, a timer with you and do three minutes for each one. Look at your little book or your video and then you'll because if you're doing it kind of halfway, just like in the gym, it doesn't work as well. Like you want to be precise in your movements. And just like anything else, you can do that your whole life and still keep learning. <laughs> so. It's beautiful. I mean, both of those majorly calm me down, which, you know, I don't know if it's good for the podcast because <laughs> it is good. <laughs> it's good. I it's great right for me, but you know, it is. The podcast energized, but no, I'm kidding. It was amazing. Yeah, I'm thinking you, I can see with your eye, like, and it, it gets you more, like, it gets you in tune with yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you can feel like, so especially when, you know, if you have to get, if you get jacked up for something, you bring yourself back down, you know, or. Well, I'm definitely going to use the second one because I have, you know, since my car accident in August, I, I have this like inguinal muscle spasm. I no idea what it is. I've been seeing my ART lady and I've also been seeing, um, my chiropractor and you know, he can get in there and stuff like that. And she can too and adjust it. But it just, I feel like it's a, some sort of a trauma. Like I'm Where hanging on to something and I don't know what it is. And I can't like let it go. Cause I don't know what it is. Yeah. You're still, have, which is it lower lumbar or is it? Uh, it's, it's right side, you know, inguinal canal, like right on the right side of my quad and not, you know, right where my like right testicle is like right down in that oh, area. Well, so it's got like, it. I cannot do abs literally cannot i mean it's yeah. so weak but i can do everything else but it's like you know my chiropractor is a very he's one of us and he's like dude you're you're attached to something energetically and you have to let it go and i'm like i just don't know what it is and he's like well you do just ask your higher self for the answer and it'll come to you but i've been doing it and i haven't gotten the answer yet or if i if I have gotten the answer, it's just not ready to, to let go yet. Yeah. So it might be like a process. I think after the podcast, I think there's one or two that are like um, lower body specific healing ones that I will I will do a little video myself and just text it to you. And or we can just, way, I'll just end the podcast and you can show me. Yeah. And then that way, because that, and you can try try them out because maybe that, that'll definitely help. It can't hurt. It can only help you. So No, 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 for sure. Um, okay. So guys, uh, Make sure you go to Erica's sites. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff on here. It's Biz Books Expert. This is your course, right? Biz Books Home. Yeah. And they, you know what? You can make it even simpler. Is if they just go to my name, everything's hooked up to my name. So just go okay, to so Erica, Erica Swenson Elliott.com. It's at the bottom link, yeah. but it'll be all these links will be in the actual podcast. Um, what final thoughts, final words? Where do you think we're going as humanity now gets closer to entering into 2022? Yeah, I mean, I, my personal feeling is that, you know, that we're at the end of the mystery book or, you know, hopefully right. closer to the end of it and that we don't know how it's going to be resolved. It's certainly not playing out the way I thought it was, it was going to be playing out. But I definitely feel like I've gotten personally more connected with my own faith and that it's like, OK, I know that there's closure and change and higher consciousness all coming. I know I'm at a level of consciousness that I've never been at because of this. And I probably would have still been doing my own little thing. So I think and if I just look at myself, I know I'm now up there on the top of your chart, Jay, relative to being hanging out, being lazy somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And I think all of us are, you know, I, I will just say uh, thank you for coming on the podcast. This was an amazing podcast today. We talked a lot and we also got some really good learning stuff, but, uh, Nobody knows, Erica. We, no one knows. We can all guess and we can venture to say and we can look at the ancient text. You no, know, there's a really good uh, link that somebody sent me about a week ago, which I've been using. I've been posting it in the group. You probably saw it. It talks about, you know, what is the ascension? Mm -hmm. And if the ascension is a transition to a higher state of being, awareness, frequency, vibration, whatever you want to call it, the people who are living 
in service to creation or with, as they say, right action, which means that, you know, you're living by the golden rule. You don't have anything to worry about. You're going to be able to access the graduation, if you would, from the earth school to whatever the next level is. And everybody has the next level. I mean, like, even if you don't graduate, you're right. you get a, you'll get a do over. Right. right. And, and at the end of the day, we're not, going to die because you are an energetic being in a physical body your physical body may expire but you are not yeah. going to die your consciousness which is all you are at pure essence is going to continue so get over the fear of dying or the limitation aspect of existence and enjoy the ride i mean yeah. again, start looking at everything that's happening here as a blessing rather than a curse or as a debacle or as a failure and observe from it and say, ask your soul or ask your higher self, you know, how can I, how, how does this serve me? How do I learn from this? Quantum sovereign soul. Quantum sovereign soul. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. So guys and girls, please go to Erica Swenson, Elliot.com. Check out all this amazing stuff that we talked today about today. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.